<laughs> These gloves are so small. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm trying to get these gloves on. They're tiny. They're like squeezing my hands. Um, tell me if y'all can hear me okay. I have never worn AirPods during a live stream before. So I think that they're probably working. I hope you can hear me. Hi, everybody joining. Hi, Big B, what is up? <laughs> Loud and clear. Okay, awesome. So today I'm out here cleaning all these cans. Like there's, oh my gosh, we have so many cans to clean that we found. Um, and so I figured I would just hang out with y'all uh, and clean some cans in the garage. We found these, it was a couple weeks ago, um, but we found them at this crazy Dollar General that was temporarily closing the store. Um, somebody posted it in my uh, Brefkis Club Facebook group, and uh, they showed like pictures of it, and it was just like filled to the brim with food. Uh, and that's just because they were temporarily closing. Something about their air conditioner being broken or something like that. Um, but this was a Dollar General. Well, we drove over there because it was only about 30 minutes from us. And the entire dumpster was full of food. But because of the like literal like vast amounts like insane amounts of food that were in it boxes of stuff it was getting crushed and so all these cans that we rescued were like kind of dirty like you can see like they've been stepped on um people were like walking all in the dumpster especially puddings <laughs> Like there was a bunch of cake mix um, and uh, what's it called? Frosting in the dumpster. And so they're just dirty. They're dirtier than the normal canned food or just food in general that we find. And so uh, here's a clean one. Look at that. Cleans up pretty nice. <laughs> so I have my clean section over here. Uh, and I'm basically just going to be doing this for a while. Uh, how have I been doing since Pilgrim? <laughs> I'm like not good today. Um, it's kind of why I'm going live is because Alex is not home right now. Um, I'm just like here by myself for a couple hours and I really miss Pilg a lot today. Um, I've kind of had a hard morning. His birthday is coming up and um, I just miss him a lot. So <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's, it's been really difficult um so it's like good to stay busy but you know sometimes stuff just doesn't work and you just need to sit there and be sad about it which is okay lunch meat none of these are expired either um this one doesn't expire until uh 2026 so that's quite a long time from now um, I've eaten a couple of the soups. There's like a bunch of Progresso soups and I've had several of them for lunch. So, um, since we've gotten all these cans, I've been enjoying them, <clears throat> but there's a lot of good food here. This, uh, I also found all these rags, which is great because I knew cleaning these, like we would be using rolls and rolls of paper towels and I didn't want to waste all the paper towels. And so it worked out really well that uh, we found all these rags like on our last dive. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, just cleaning them. I hope y'all are having a good day. Y'all are kind of far away. I'm trying to read the comments. Yes, I think that y'all will be able to cheer me up. I already, you know, it's good to talk about it. It's definitely helpful. I don't want to sit here and cry while I'm cleaning all these cans. <laughs> that might not be that fun of a live stream. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, I'm so, I love um, when we find food. Alex loves when we find food. That's like, he doesn't really care as much about um home decor or clothes or stuff like that like he really likes when we find food um that's like how we got into dumpster diving in the beginning anyways 
was dumpster diving at Trader Joe's when we both lived in California. Um, he lived there for a couple years and I only lived there for like nine months. But the whole time we were there, we didn't buy groceries. Oh, it's kind of gross. Um, because we would go to Trader Joe's every night. <laughs> and that was crazy. Um, their dumpsters were just like filled to the brim with non-expired foods, uh, good like loaves of bread. Like we really didn't buy anything. They have really strict policies, um, kind of the same as Whole Foods, uh, where they actually throw the food away like a week or more. Um before it expires because the clientele there I guess is uh pickier I don't know um they want to have the highest standards but unfortunately that means they're throwing out like perfectly good foods every single night filling their dumpster up with quality items um it was really wild we really did not buy groceries for nine months the only thing we bought was soy sauce because <laughs> I really wanted soy sauce and we couldn't ever find it that was in 2000 2011 or 12 that was a long time ago um dumpsters weren't locked as much back then we could go anywhere and they would have an open dumpster for us to get all our stuff in <laughs> just a nice misting for all the cans Oh, my table's dirty. It's nice with the garage being clean because I actually can set up kind of like a workspace in here, which is nice after the garage sale. It's pretty cleared. We've dove in, dove in, dived. We've dove. What's the past tense of dumpster dive? Dumpster dived. <laughs> dumpster dove. I like dove. Um, I don't know what is like proper. Dumpster dived sounds kind of weird to me, but we've been dumpster diving a lot. Um, and so our garage is kind of, it's getting full again. Man, cherry pie filling. That's cool. See this can? Frosting. Because we were in the dumpster. Oh, yeah, it's dove. Really? That's the one that sounds weird to me. Dumpster dove. Dumpster, dumpster dove, dumpster dove in. <laughs> I guess I'll say dumpster dove. Sometimes when I don't know the word, you know, I just try to like find a different word that works. Like saying we went dumpster diving instead of we dumpster dove last week. But yeah, I agree. Deb uh, says it's so trashing it, donate it. Um, I completely agree. It was it was sick, like in a bad way to see all of the wasted food here. And when we first I tried to go to this um, dumpster like uh, three, three times uh, before I drove up there twice in one day, uh, early, early in the morning and then again in the evening. And then I went back a third time before I was able to dive before um, the employees were not there anymore and I got videos of them like just throwing away like whole cases of drinks like in the plastic of uh, wrapping and everything um so when we finally got back and were able to go we pulled up to probably like 15 20 other people in the dumpster um and I'm so glad like I don't have any problem with other divers being there I know that we'll never be able to take as much as they've wasted and so I'm really happy that there were like so many other families there. When we first got there, we even didn't go up because there were so many people. Um, we went across the street and ate. <laughs> and we got we went to this restaurant where you could see the dumpster through the window. And so we just like sat there and we got uh, chicken. And we just sat there and ate and watched all the people diving across the street. And a cop even came. And I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't tell everybody to leave. Like, that would be terrible. Um, and obviously, I was far away, so I couldn't hear the conversation. But um, he pulled up. People came over and talked to him. And he talked to people and stuff. And then he just drove off. And everyone kept diving. So um, I was really glad he didn't tell anybody to leave. So then we ate. And then we went over. 
and there were still several families there and it came and went in kind of waves. Like at one point we were the only people. And then at one point there were like so many other people. Um, and it, it was, it was, I mean, it was unbelievable. It was one of those big Holloway construction dumpsters and there it was just floor to the top of it full of food. And you could like pull stuff out, like try to dig a hole to see it was just food all the way down. Um, and it was crazy. A lot of the food that was bagged or in boxes was destroyed um, just from having other things thrown on top of it, having people walk up there. Um, like there were a bunch of cake flower boxes, like cake mixes, and um, those were like bursting open. And so a lot of this stuff is covered in like a white powder and it's cake flour. Um, but that's why we primarily took cans because like even this can is like kind of it's like falling apart you know the wrappers coming off a little bit but at least you know canned foods are going to be good like someone could step on it and it's still going to be a fruit cocktail in light syrup <laughs> as opposed to like um you know boxes of stuff that could potentially have gotten uh something in it that would not be good to eat and so we primarily took canned food we also took some i mean this is tuna but we also took some little bags of tuna as well. Um, but that was like primarily it is canned food. But I mean, this little amount that I have here, this is probably 40 cans or something. It's like not even a fourth. It might not even be like a tenth of what we brought home. My truck bed was entirely full of canned foods and medicine. I think I told you all that at the garage sale uh, live stream, but man, we found a crazy amount of unexpired. None of this stuff is expired either. It's all, um, it's all still in date. Um, and all the medicine too, it's like bags and bags of boxed Tylenols, Pepto-Bismols. Um, a woman who was diving there alongside us, um, was really excited because there was a whole bag of children's like aspirin and children's medicine. And she said she was a mom of six and, um, it, I mean, it probably saved her like a thousand dollars on the amount of medicine um, that we were like getting and she was taking and stuff like it's really like disappointing to see it like that um, and to know that that store just like doesn't care <laughs> at all about people in the sense of like that should be donated. I can't get this one little chocolate. There's like one little bit of chocolate right there. <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really disappointing um, that that was their method of getting rid of that food that the store no longer needed was to literally just throw it in the trash. That's so wrong. Ooh, I'm sweaty. I don't know where to. No. <laughs> it's so humid today. Sorry. It's like kind of nice actually, but it's extremely humid. It's been raining a bunch. I'm just like talking, sorry. I I would like to ah, say hi to everyone. Hi y'all. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. Hi Linda. Uh, without my glasses on. Do you make sure all the barcodes have a black line through them so no one can turn? Oh yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, they all do. They're marked out. This one expires January 4th, 2024. But the store did uh, cross them out for that reason so that you can't just bring it back. Which, like, fine. I'm not going to return them, but people could use them. Hi, everybody. I got to get so close to see without my glasses. My favorite time of day to dive. You prefer to go at night. I really, I used to like going at night. I'm not a night person anymore. I go to sleep at like, nine nine thirty every night <laughs> i really like to like work during the day dive in the morning and um go to sleep <laughs> i uh i get a lot of sleep every night sometimes i'll stay at like this dollar general dumpster we went late in the night um and that was just because every time i tried to go during the day there were employees there throwing things away and so i did have to stay up to go at night but for the most part I really like to go to sleep early so I go during the day thank you Linda 
<laughs> Y'all are cool. I'm glad that we're doing this. Um, <clears throat> I uh, Sometimes when you're sad, it feels easier to just sit alone. Um, and it's, that feels easier. But I think what's helpful a lot of the times for me um, is to try to do something where I'm talking to other people or I'm getting to be around folks like I'm not super extroverted but I do feel like when I am feeling sad or having a bad day if I can get myself to do something that involves other humans I start feeling a lot better but it is hard Alex, where's Alex? He's a jujitsu. He practices jujitsu um, two, three times a week. Um, yeah, he really likes it. Um, it's a good. I, I, he's been doing it for a long time. Well, I say a long time, not since he was like a kid or anything, but a couple of years now. Um, and it's kind of made me want to get into something that's like a physical. He like has to be there at a specific time. It's like on the specific days. Like it kind of has made me want to get into maybe a routine like that. Um, maybe doing yoga or something where I have somewhere to be. That's the interesting thing with working for myself is I don't ever have anywhere to be. Like I can just go if I want to go somewhere. Um, but I do think having some of that uh, schedule, more rigid schedule is probably helpful in life. I hope these rags were clean. I pulled them right out of the trash and I'm like wiping my face with them, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they smell fine. They were in a laundry basket and they smelled like they'd been washed. So what are you gonna do? You know, it's fine. Did I already clean this one? Did I just pull this one up? I don't know. I'll clean it again. It doesn't look that clean if I cleaned it. Man. <laughs> Hanging out, you know. How any diving tips on how to get started? I think um, going to your local dumpsters, like you don't even have to be like, I'm not even going to take anything. Like I'm just going to go scout dumpsters. Um, that's what I used to do, and uh, that kind of helps you get a feel for like when is trash picked up. Um, what stores have compactors, um, stuff like that. And you can go and just look and see, and then look at the store hours. If you want to go after they're closed, or if you just want to go in the daytime, like I do while the stores are open, you can do that. Um, it just depends on, sometimes I get caught, you know, but not that often, really not that often. Um, a grabber really helps. And a little step stool helps um, being able to do that. But I think the biggest tip for diving is like, you just kind of have to go do it. You have to go try. And cause it's nerve wracking. Like it is, um, it's a little bit scary, but that's more in the beginning. And then it, the more you do it, the more you get over the fear. And it kind of just feels like secondhand of like, oh, let me just like jump out and check this dumpster or whatever. Um, we're getting there. <laughs> More cans. The other thing that that uh, dumpster was full of was peanut butter. Um, there's a couple here, but yeah, these peanut butters. Let's see, let's see the expiration. It's crazy how hard it is to find it. <laughs> I don't even think it has one. That's weird. Hmm, that is weird. I've never known peanut butter to not have an expiration date. Maybe it doesn't. Am I a, a swimmer? I love to swim. Uh, we went swimming yesterday at the lake. I have scoliosis and my neck and back hurt a lot, especially with my line of work, <laughs> getting in and out of the dumpsters and um, just physicality, doing physical a lot and stuff or whatever. Um, 
I just have back pain and stuff. So I really love to swim because it really, it's like, it helps loosen my muscles so much. Um, it's really nice. So we'll go to the lake. Like yesterday we went and we did our, it's like three and a half miles. No, it's yeah. 3.7 miles. Is that right? 2.7. I don't remember. It's about three miles, our hike that we do. And then we go swim in the lake and it is really nice. We started going and doing that, uh, after Pilgrim died, um, it was kind of just the only thing we could do that made us feel any sort of happiness. And so we were doing that a lot. I think I'm going to switch rags now. That's gross, dirty. Okay, that's my face drag. Ta-da. <laughs> I love finding stuff in the dumpster, like the rags. It's so helpful. I was really about to go buy some because I didn't want to waste paper towels. And so I thought, well, if we use rags, at least we could just wash them and then um, reuse them. And then sure enough, on our next dive, we found a laundry basket. It's right over there. Uh, full of towels and a lot of like rags like this. And then there's also like cute ones. Like at first I had this one. Oh, wait, no, this is just a, this is just another rag. I thought it was a cute one. They had some that were like... Um, uh, they have cute designs on them for your like kitchen and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to use those for this cause this is dirtier work, <laughs> but I do really like to find the stuff that I use for cleaning products and stuff in the trash. Oh my God, the humidity. I'm sweating so much. It's like dripping off my face. Oh. I found this cup also in the trash. Um, and I am obsessed with it. It's a tea company, Old Barrel Tea Co. They're not around here. They're in um, New Mexico and Arizona. And I kind of thought it was just like a regular tea cup, but it's a hot, cold cup. This is like an advertisement for this cup or something. Um, it's like keeps it so cold. And then I have hot tea in it in the morning and it keeps it so hot. Right now I'm just drinking ice water, but it's... um like absolutely my favorite cup and that was another thing that i was looking for in the dumpster or i was looking for that i wanted to find in the dumpster because i really wanted a nice cup i could take that would fit in a, a car cup holder and stuff um and then sure enough i was using a different one that i found that was more just like kind of a quick trip kind of vibe cup just whatever um and then i saw that one and it's really pretty and so I uh, started using it and I love it. I don't have a fan right now, I know. Our air conditioning is uh, replaced, but out here in the garage, we don't have anything. I just have the garage door open. Um, actually, maybe I'll open, I'm gonna open. There, we have a little door behind us too. Okay, that might be like a cross breeze, which is nice. But yeah, we did get our air conditioning um, replaced actually. Uh, that was not really fun, but they still haven't inspected it. The inspector came out um, and then, well, he like never showed up like three times. He just, we had a time frame that he was supposed to come out and like he just literally never showed up all those times. And then he finally came and then we failed. They failed the inspection. Um, and so then they had to come back out and fix it. But then they said, actually, he just looked at it wrong and it is right. <laughs> and it should have passed inspection. Um, and then uh, now the inspector has to come back out. But twice now he has not shown up during the allotted like window of time that he's supposed to come. So I just never called him back. I'm like, it's their problem at this point. Like, if they want to come inspect it, they can come figure it out. Because I was like being the mediator for it. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so maybe they'll come back out and inspect it. Maybe they won't. It works great. Our house is so cool. They put in like a nice new AC panel for us. Because um, we just had one of the like dials that you would turn um and so they put in like a touchpad one 
It's nice. My favorite vacation spots. Ooh, that's fun. I want to go on vacation right now. Um, I loved going to Maine. Maine was just incredible. Um, we went to Acadia, Bar Harbor, Portland. Um, that was really cool. We like drove up, we flew into Portland and then we rented a car and drove to Bar Harbor. So that was like a three hour drive or something up the coast and like all through the like Blue Ridge Parkway or whatever. No, that's North Carolina. Am I thinking of North Carolina? No, I love North Carolina too. But Maine is the second to last place we went, I guess. And I've like wanted to go back. I really would like to go back. But we don't have anywhere planned right now. We normally go on a trip around November though. Um, ooh, I love Canada. We've been to um, Vancouver twice. Um, the first time was only for 24 hours. <laughs> that was when we were living in our uh, van and we were driving around and we drove into Canada and then um, our van which was our home like the check engine light came on and our phones weren't working because we didn't have service in Canada and um so we just kind of like I don't even think we stayed the night yeah we stayed the night in a little hotel like right across the border and then we drove down back into uh Biltmore or something uh, I'm so bad like I've been to so many states and um we travel a lot and I just really can't I get all the cities confused of like was that Washington or was that North Carolina. <laughs> but yeah, we just kind of turned around and drove back, which I think Border Patrol thought was kind of sketch because um, we'd already gotten stopped on the way into Canada because my dad had given me a taser um, when we went on the road because we were just living in our van in different parking lots and stuff. Um, and so he gave me this like intense taser well, we didn't know that tasers are illegal in Canada. Um, and so we were pulling in and the border patrol was like, do you have this? Do you have firearms? Do you have fireworks? Do you have this, this, this? We were like, no, 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 none of that. Um, and then the last thing they asked was, do you have any tasers? And I was like, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> it was like hooked on the passenger seat. Um we just like had it hooked there. The battery was dead. It like wasn't, it didn't even work at that point. Um, and they were like, okay, pull in. Like we're searching your whole van. They tore the van apart. Um, it was pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> we were detained and it was a couple hours that we were detained there. And then they searched our whole van. They pulled the mattress out. Like we had, um, we asked for gift cards because when we went on, when we were doing this, this was like a month, two months after we got married because this was like our honeymoon um, trip. We, we spent like four months on the road. And so for our wedding, we had asked people to give us um, gift cards for like gas cards and restaurants and stuff because that seemed cool. So we'd put all of our gift cards in this little like waterproof plastic pouch and one of the cup holders in the far back of the van, you could lift it out of like the wooden windowsill that they had in those old converted vans. And so we um, lifted out the cup holder and we shoved that bag down in there uh, to keep it safe in case we got like robbed or something we'd still have because it was like a thousand dollars in gift cards or something. It was a lot. Um, and so we put it down there. Well, uh, Border Patrol found that. They even took out our cup holders and pulled it out. And we like still laugh about it because we're like, they probably thought they hit the jackpot. Like, I'm sure they, when they found a little plastic baggie, like down in a cup holder hidden, they were like, we got them. We got them. Um, but it was just gift cards. <laughs> but they did keep our taser. Um, and they even asked for the charger. They wanted to see like how it worked and stuff. And so we gave them the charger and everything. But yeah, it was pretty funny. While we were like detained in the station, we saw him through a window, the guy holding our taser going around showing the other like border patrol people. <laughs> it was funny. We were surprised that they were like, I figured they would have seen something like that. But yeah, that was... um. 
it's funny. I know we're rebels. Yeah, it's funny. Our van was like, I mean, now everyone kind of lives in their van. Um, and so it's probably less um, problematic looking, I guess. But we always thought our van was like kind of just kind of rough looking, um, kind of sketchy. We had like a huge roof rack that Alex built. So it was like not a manufactured roof rack. It was just like this huge wooden jet black roof rack. And like, <laughs> it was a fun time. It was really fun. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we're married. We've been married. Um, our anniversary is in September. Um, and we will we'll have been married nine years. We're almost to our 10. Yeah, they did keep the taser. They totally did. That's like why they wanted the charger. Because <laughs> they, they wanted it and they wanted it to work. It was like the crazy kind that like has like prongs on the end. So I guess you like in an emergency situation, you would stab it into someone and then tase it. It was intense. I'm glad I never had to use it. Um, cause I don't, yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, we do want to go on more trips, um, like the, we've, we've been talking about some stuff. It's too early for me to like announce it here. Cause we change our plan like every other day, but we have definitely talked about hitting the road again. Um, we really want to move from Texas. That's still sealed and everything, that peanut butter. Um, we want to leave Texas, but we haven't really, like, thought it through too much. Well, we think about it and talk about it all the time. We just haven't picked our exact perfect plan. Thank you, Big B, uh, for moderating and everything. I really appreciate it. Everybody say hi to Big B and go follow his dumpster diving and check him out if you haven't already. I feel like Big B is like the dad of dumpster diving. Like everybody knows him, loves him. He's cool. He's a good guy to have on your team. Hi, Tara. Oh, your daughter's sick from school. She's home. I'm sorry. I hope she feels better. Uh, I always used to tell my mom, I don't want to go to school. I'm sick. <laughs> and she'd always say, okay. <laughs> I miss so many days of school. But I'm sure your daughter is sick. I hope she feels better. I never really liked school. I actually, that's maybe not true. I really did like school. I just didn't really like going to school, but I love to learn. I really like to read a lot. Um, but not like the forced curriculum reads, I guess, as much. But man, I've been out of school for a long time. <laughs> I was actually looking for SpaghettiOs. Um, when I came out here, I got a soup. And I was like, I wonder if there's SpaghettiOs because I really want SpaghettiOs. <laughs> and I couldn't find any. But there they are. Oh my God. Oh, we're down to like. This is all that's left so far. I mean, again, this is not even a portion of it. Um, I went to, I did a semester of college. Um, but I, I really had a lot of depression then, um, I guess as well. And so, but at that point, I, I didn't know that I was, that I was depressed. I just knew I was really overwhelmed and, and I didn't know why. And I knew that everything was really a, real struggle um and I didn't know why and so I ended up uh not continuing that but um it worked out I mean I I don't think you have to have a degree um to do interesting things and I want to do interesting things and I don't think that you have to have a formal education for that, especially if like you enjoy learning online and, and researching and watching YouTube videos that educate you on certain topics or whatever. Um, and so I did, I did a lot of that. Um, and I was a photographer back then. And so I, um, 
I didn't need to go to school for that. I started out doing like my friends, senior portraits and stuff in high school. And then uh, I moved on to weddings and then I moved to the fashion industry. And I did that for a couple of years and um, worked with Dallas modeling agencies and stuff to uh, photograph their models. And um, that was really cool. I mean, that's how I met my closest friends um is through photographing them for their agencies and then uh i stopped i stopped doing that and then i did i still did photography but i ran a i was the head of social media marketing for a restaurant group here and i ran all the social media for eight restaurants um and so i still did get to be creative and do photography but it was also kind of like more analytical and um that was fine. That was social media already is a huge part of everyone's life and can be super negative to constantly be on social media. And so also having my job be social media, which I guess my job is social media at some degree still, but in a less stressful way. Like I'm not dealing with customer complaints um, and messages and like all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's not for anybody, it's just for me. And so I get to dictate if I wanna, you know, respond to a message at midnight. Whereas when I worked for them, I was just on call 24 seven. Like I never had an off day um, cause the restaurants never had off days. And so it was stressful. I did it for about a year um, and I realized it just, well, there were a couple factors in it. Um, they wanted to add four more restaurants and they weren't interested in raising my rate at all. And I kind of like fought with them on that. And it just, it kind of ended how it ended, um, which was fine. It didn't end poorly, but it, it did push me. That pushed me to be like, I want to work for myself. Like I like working for myself and I'm not a hundred percent dedicated to this anymore and so I stopped working there and that is what um, immediately led me into this which I really started by driving for Uber Eats um, and while I would drive through all those neighborhoods dropping off food I would see curb alerts like all the time um, and so uh, I started picking them up and I'd just fill the car up while I was driving around delivering food to people um, and then I would sell it and I was starting to make money from it. And I was like, this is really cool. And then um, I was like, well, remember you used to dumpster dive. There might be stuff in dumpsters too still. Like you should check. <laughs> so I checked and I filmed it and I just wanted my parents and stuff to see what I was doing. And um, so I put it on YouTube. And then it was a couple months after that. Um, I did my first college move out video and that was really where I got, maybe a lot of y'all found me from that. Um, that was really where I started to be like, oh, people are interested in this. As a person who loves dumpster diving, I also, I had no clue that there was a community of dumpster divers who love dumpster diving. I thought this was just a weird thing that I liked to do. <laughs> so I wasn't positive that people would want to watch that. Um, so it was really um, awesome that people do like watching that um, and it's something that I love doing and so it kind of falls right in really nicely um, and I think if you're someone who can do something and work for themselves especially someone like myself I guess with anxiety and depression and just some some days are really bad um, and some days are really hard and it's like I don't know that I could go into work on some days that I used to have to force myself to go in. Um, and now it's kind of like, if I need a rest day, then I guess I'm really thankful that I can take a rest day. Um, so I really, I love encouraging people to do things that they want to do and chase the dreams that they want, regardless of if peop other people are interested in it or not. Like that shouldn't dictate the things that you have um, passion for. Um, you should just do what you're passionate about. And I think people respond to passionate people too. So like if you really love something and you really want to do it and you're passionate about it, that might be like, I don't know, people resonate with, with that. 
and it's just great to not have to force yourself into a societal standard into a box of what does accomplishment look like what does success look like um it's just like what do i like doing what fuels me what brings me joy like what energizes me and makes me want to get up the next day and do it again and that's dumpster diving some days it's not some days i'm like do i really want to go climb in this trash can like (laughs) again like no (laughs) some days are definitely like that or it's like it's been a week and we like haven't found anything like we are just on like a dry spell everything has its challenges but it is like i just think it's important to follow those passions and dreams for yourself like even if you're not sure the general population is going to relate or think it's interesting or whatever not think you're gross (laughs) oh look at this one i'm not even gonna have to clean these this can just come off these are sealed I don't have any scissors out here. Okay, we'll have to leave that one, but look at that. That's two things of chicken. They're sealed up in there. I guess I will just clean the packaging. I can't take it off. (laughs) Um, Where do your dreams take you? Uh, To a dumpster. (laughs) That's true, I have trash dreams. Yes, that's right. I did my first and only interview with Big B. <laughs> I don't, that stuff makes me nervous. Um, yeah, I um, get emails sometimes of people writing articles or whatever. I normally just refer them to other divers. Um, if that's the other thing, like, I don't, mind if if I don't you know grow as fast as I could like as far as my channel um because other divers get you know if you're in newspapers and stuff that helps um get people's eyes on you and everything but that kind of stuff gives me a lot of anxiety and I would just rather not like I'm really happy with my like with you guys (laughs) like (laughs) I'm happy I don't want to do something that makes me uncomfortable. Not the big B thing. I'm not talking about that. That was so much fun. And it's like when you're being, when you're just like chatting with like other divers, it's different because they understand they're not looking for anything specific from you. Um, It's just like, we're all hanging out and we have a common interest, a common goal. And we love dumpster diving. And that's fun to talk about. That's just chatting with friends. But like newspapers or blogs or whatever i'm just gonna not do it for as long as possible same with sponsorships i don't want to do sponsorships for anything that i'm not like 100 percent passionate about um there's a (laughs) there's a lot of companies that have wanted me to do sponsorships for things that i'm like this is just fueling capitalism and like it's fueling a wasteful society with fast fashion or it's things that I find constantly in the trash that people have thrown away. I don't want to say to y'all, Hey, buy this product because I get a profit from it. Like when it's just encouraging people to go spend money on something that they don't need. If I ever do a sponsorship, it'll be something that I am like, yes, I'm sponsored by this grabber company and I love their grabbers. Like, (laughs) not like being like, hey, this like, this little stand holds your purse perfectly so your purse doesn't get any creases in it. Like that was one recently. And I'm like, do you look at my channel (laughs) before you like ask me to do these sponsorships? Like that is not in line with this channel, but whatever. I'm out of cans. I love y'all for talking to me. I think I'm going to get some more cans. I only put out a small amount because I was like, well, that way there's a natural end and I can 
tell everyone bye, but I feel so much better now. I'm like, I'm gonna get more cans. Yeah, oh, look at that, three apple juices. Any new tattoo ideas? I really have been having a problem with tattoos right now because I really want a pilgrim tattoo and I feel like that should be my next one. Um, but I don't have a specific vision for it. And the artists and shop that we normally go to doesn't really have anybody who specializes in por portraits of pets. Um, and I, I really want to make sure that it resembles him. I don't want to get a generic tattoo like um, of a paw print or something. I like want it to be of him. And so I really want the person who does it to be good at it. And so I think I might just have to hold off. The only person I've found is in Chicago. I actually ate one of these from here and they're not good. So I'm throwing this one over there to put in the trash. Um, it, it was like so crushed. It wasn't a bar anymore at all. And its flavor wasn't very good. And <laughs> I regretted eating it. So I'm not going to donate it. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of been tough because I'm not sure. Um, oh, Pilgrim looking at a squirrel. That'd be cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> I think that's like one of the hardest things is when I see squirrels in the backyard because they, we never had squirrels in our backyard because he would chase them off. And it's like, they knew that our backyard had like a predator in it. Um, and now we have them, um, we have squirrels. Uh, Alex looked out the window one morning and there was a cat laying in our garden, just a cat that would never happen before. So it's kind of, um, when I see squirrels, that really does remind me of, of Pilgrim. And we found um, a bunch of pets, uh, pet toys and stuff. That's actually the next video. It should be out. I should be able to get it done by tomorrow. Um, but we found all these pet toys at a, in a dumpster at Petco. And one of the toys we found was his toy. Like, it was the smaller version, but it was the exact same little lamb, and it was that was kind of rough. But I know y'all understand. A lot of people here have had pets that they've lost, and um, you guys have been like a huge source of comfort for me because of just mutual ground on that. I think some people in my life, I guess, don't quite understand that Pilgrim was like our son. Like that wasn't a dog to us, you know what I mean? And I think you guys understand that. And it just, I really am glad because I know that lots of people in this community um, have lost their loved little babies. Ooh, in Maine. Oh, that's so cool. Hi, Janet, and your husband. <laughs> um, we are not getting another um, animal of any kind right now because our life is kind of up in the air. We really want to move. And so um, we don't want to get a, a dog. We would get a dog. I mean, we've talked about getting cats um, or a cat. cat I, I don't know. I like something big. Pilgrim was like a real hug. Like you could just hug him. And it was like just this big, warm, loving, energy, comforting. Cats to me are a little more elusive and they might not want to hug. Whereas Pilgrim, I could kind of tell he wouldn't want to be hugging right now, but it's like, he's going to sit there and hug me because he's a sweet boy. But cats might, you know, be more temperamental or something. They just don't come off as loving to me um, in the same way. I had cats all growing up. Um, we had 
like a dozen or something at one point. We lived out in the country, so they were like um, farm cats, you know, bar barn cats. Um, and so I do, I like cats. I think I just might've had so many of them when I was younger that um, I uh, am over them in a way. I think finding the toy of pilgrims is his way of telling you he's okay. Yeah, we've found a lot of dog stuff since he passed. Um, which I never, I really didn't find dog stuff in the past. That or I just wasn't, it wasn't as sentimental, I guess. And I didn't even think about it, but. Hi, Ronnie. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad all y'all are here. Teresa, you found your cat in the dumpster. See, if I found a cat in a dumpster, I would absolutely keep it. Like, that'd be my cat now. That would be my cat. Um, don't hold me to it. <laughs> if we find a cat in the dumpster, maybe I'll take it to a shelter. But I do feel like if I found it, you gotta keep it. Um, but yeah, we, I guess we, we're wanting to move. So no, we don't want to get another animal and then have to force it to get comfortable here and then move and then you know it's stressful for them in the same way it's stressful for us and so and it's also like I want to give myself space to really like mourn pilgrim and not that getting another animal takes that away but I think that I wouldn't be processing it every day like I am if I had gotten another dog because then it's like you just move on you're happy like you get a new dog and it's a dog and you fall in love with it the same way and all that stuff and um that's beautiful and I do think that that would be really comforting and would help but I also think that it wouldn't like allow me maybe the space to like truly heal and process and I don't know everyone's different you never know it's gonna work for you until you try it but right now I think just I don't know it's kind of better for us to just do this for a while somewhere we're wanting to move to um maybe Maine um we want to move out of the south the only place in the south I would really want to live is North Carolina but <clears throat> even there um it's a bit like Texas um so Maine, uh, Colorado, New Mexico. New Mexico um, has like different laws on how you can build your house um, and they allow earth ships, which are built out of trash. It's like mostly tires uh, and bottles and recyclables and it's their houses made of trash and they're built into the side of mountains and we stayed in one actually for our first anniversary um and it's like kind of a whole ecosystem like you can have um like salmon in your house swimming because you have like rainwater collection and there's like uh hydroponic plants growing and you can have fish like it's really cool they um you know they are sustainable like running off of the heat that it absorbs or the coolness that it absorbs um and I think that that would be amazing to live in one. Maybe even Alex thinks it'd be cool to build one. And so um, that would be really, that would be neat. And it would be in line with my beliefs. And so I think that that's like important to consider as well. Um, but New Mexico is really cool for that reason. And it snows and um, there's skiing and there's mountains. Texas is so flat when you're up in the northern part of Texas. Um, and it's so hot. Um, and other factors <laughs> that make us not like it. So come live in New York. I've never been to New York. Um, hi, Rule. Yeah, I, Alex has been to New York. I've never been to New York. Um, New York is intimidating to me. I'm, I definitely want to go. I mean, I want to go to all the states. I want to see everywhere. Um, New York is like so big though. And I feel like I would want to spend 
a couple weeks there or something so that I could see like upstate, um, obviously the city. I don't know that much about New York, um, but a lot of divers that I follow um, and like, um, like the trash scavenger on Instagram and the trash walker, uh, she's on TikTok and Instagram and everything. She finds really great stuff and it's all just walking down the streets of New York. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy what they find. Um, the trash scavenger on Instagram, that's an account that I just started following. Um, and he is a really cool account, um, because he really documents, like I, found this in this specific place I picked up all the pieces put it back together and I sold it for a thousand dollars like he just found a old Nikon printer that he did that with and he actually said the man was coming out and throwing it on the sidewalk smashing it as hard as he could with all the other trash and he said to him like don't do that like that prevents people from being able to rescue this stuff and the guy like was like oh it's trash and he smashed another one well the guy collected all the pieces um, he even went home and came back with the screwdriver he needed to get the pieces. Um, and it's cool. It's like a blog, I guess. It's more like a, you know, Instagram blog that you um, kind of get to read along. And, and he makes a huge profit um, off of the stuff that he finds in the trash. And so it's really cool. Um, that's a good account to, to follow um, for cool stuff like that. Oh, this jam strawberry preserves Whew. some parts of canada that would be oh that would be cool i just that one's trash that's opened that's the first opened one what about this one no that one's good good and sealed Ooh, michigan hi thank you um, Michigan is another place, um, that we like, um, I've only ever been in the winter, so I would love to go see the lakes in the summer or sometime when they're not frozen over. That was like, um, oh, his name, um, is the trash scavenger. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah. The trash scavenger. Um, he just posted an hour ago that he found a candelabra. Um, and I guess he hasn't sold it yet, but he found that. It's beautiful. Um, oh, sorry, not scavenger. The trash salvager. The trash salvager. Um, and when you go to his profile, his name's Matt. That's what it looks like. So it's, it's a cool, um, it's crazy. He found a bracelet that he sold for $220. I'm like, that's so respectable or respectful. So respect, I don't know. Um, admirable. See, just change the word. If you don't know the word, change it. <laughs> that's the best way. Gosh, this is a lot of jam in here. Hi from Oklahoma. Hi. Alex is from Oklahoma. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Tried dumpster driving at a grocery store, but I couldn't find the dumpster. <laughs> That's funny. We found an Albertsons. If y'all don't know Albertsons, I don't know if it's local or, or everywhere. Um, but it's like kind of like a it's a Tom Thumb Kroger energy. Um we shop at Albertsons. I really like Albertsons, but I really I'm only like Albertsons because no one shops there in at our one here in Denton. Um, and so I go in and I'm like the only person at Kroger and stuff. Um, it overwhelms me because there's so many people. It's just a lot going on. Um, and so I like going to Albertsons because they're slow. I'm like their only customer. But the um, Albertsons we found was in a different city. And this also is in hopefully tomorrow's video um, that I'm gonna be posting if I finish editing it uh, today. But it had a dumpster. It had a huge um, construction dumpster and we got um, some good, some snacks. They, it wasn't a lot of like um, produce and stuff, 
but we did get a lot of great like chips and snacks and breads and stuff like that from it. Yeah, Albertsons, I, I think it's an older store maybe. Um, around here, it's like the cheaper store because they're not all fancy and stuff. It's It's not updated. plant-based foods. I'm like only eating um, meat right now. <laughs> Albertsons is the same company as Safeway. Interesting. Yeah, I am hot. I'm sorry. I'm real sweaty. But it's always hot here. So today's just different because it's super humid. Um, there was all that flooding in Dallas, which is crazy. Um, we didn't get any of that, but we are getting rain and, um, this whole week it's supposed to be scattered thunderstorms, um, through like the whole weekend and everything. So I'm hoping that we get to be able to go dive. Um, you know, it's harder to dive in the rain for sure. It's just like, not as, not as fun. Everything's wet. All the trash is wet. You can't tell if it's rainwater, which is clean, or if it's dumpster juice. Like, it's hard to know. I know. My cleaning rag, should I swap? It's kind of gross. We'll swap. Here's a new one. <laughs> all these little apple juices. This is crazy, all this food. Do we have grocery outlets? I don't know that we do. We do have Winco. Yeah, that's true. Um, I never shop at Winco. I don't know why. There's a big one. They just like uh, built a huge one over uh, here, over there. <laughs> it's a good size, but yeah, I've never, I've been in it, but I haven't shopped there. Feel intimidated to dump five. How do you get over the feeling as though everyone is watching you. I mean, that is a feeling that I still do kind of have. Um, I I really like to go to dumpsters that are hidden, like in a way. Um, they're more like behind the stores where it's like, if you go to a big outdoor shopping center where there's a bunch of stores or something, some of those dumpsters, sometimes I do feel like everybody can see me right now. And so I like to go to the ones that are just like a standalone store. You go back there and you're the only person. And at least that way, um, you might still feel the anxiety of people are watching, but it's like, you can kind of like, I look all around and I'm like, there's no cars, nobody's on a bike coming by or whatever. Um, I also think that feeling gets diminished the more you go, like the more often you do it, even if it's, you only go once a month, but now it's been a whole year. And so you've gone several times. It, um, feels less, it feels less, uh, intimidating the, the more you go. But I do kind of think for some people, like for me, that's just a feeling I have, like, I just kind of always feel like I'm going to get caught if I'm not fast. And so sometimes it, it, it like, um, it, uh, I don't know the word for it. It hurts me. It doesn't hurt me, but I won't spend as long at dumpsters sometimes because of that fear. And so I've tried to work on that. Alex coming with me has really helped me stay longer because, um, I, sorry, hold on. Um, because I know there's like a second set of eyes watching for me, um, and just having a partner there with you is helpful for safety. Um, but that's also why I liked going during the day because I really, um, felt safer and I don't think I would feel comfortable going by myself, um, at night. I don't really think I would ever do. I don't even go on walks by myself. Like, um, I mean, it's it's helpful to have a partner. So, um, but yeah, see, some people don't care who watches and that's fine. And like some days I feel that way um, too, where I'm like, let them watch. Like there's no way I'm going to get stuff out of this dumpster without at least a couple people seeing me. Um, and so it's like, you know, oh well. But like, I feel that way on the college move out days a lot. 
because there's still students moving out um, at the time that I am digging around in the trash. And so they see me a lot. And it's kind of different. It depends on who the person is. Um, certain people, like employees of a store, are more intimidating to me than a, just a student walking by or whatever. Um, people who could actually get me in trouble are more are more intimidating. But even that, it's like we run into cops. like. And they've said, no problem, keep going. Just don't make a mess because the illegal part, at least where I am here, the uh, what's illegal is the littering. And so if you're diving and you're spreading that everywhere and you're not, you're just making a huge mess, like you don't even care, like that's what's illegal. Um, and obviously that's just like wrong in general um, to let all that trash get everywhere. Um, but the actual dumpster diving and scavenging that is not illegal now in the video that i we shot earlier um i legitimately did not see these signs and there's like signs in the background as i'm editing it signs everywhere that's like scavenging is prohibited no digging no looking in the trash no dumpster diving and there's like these huge signs and i really just didn't even read it like i even show it i'm like oh look we got dumpster rules um and then I just moved on. I didn't read the whole thing and it was saying this is illegal. Um, but it's a, it's, that's a, it's a classist law. Um, it should not, it, that is obviously <laughs> for a specific class of people. Like it, I just, I think it's ridiculous um, to prohibit somebody to say, we would rather you starve um, then take something from that we deemed trash. We threw this away, but you are not allowed to have it. I think that that's ridiculous. Um, and I'm not condoning diving where it's illegal. Um, you have to make that decision on your own. But as for me and my family, <laughs> we dive. Um, and it it's, I, it's not something that I am worried about. If someone wants to arrest me for trying to take food to donate then that is a cause that I will go down for like whatever <laughs> I think it's ridiculous I went to a dumpster one time that the it was a retail store and they had printed out a sign um, that they'd handwritten um, and put it on the dumpster they taped it up there that said we're watching you, you disgusting dumpster divers. Like we see you and we're calling the cops. Like you're pathetic. I cried. Like I was so wrecked by them saying that because it just feels like I really felt like, okay, this, I don't have to dive in the trash for my food. Like I am fortunate enough to be able to go to the grocery store and purchase my food. And so I know that that sign is not like 100% directed at me, but imagine if that was your only source of like survival. And then you arrive there and they're calling you pathetic. They're calling you disgusting. Like that is so harmful. Like, I just think that that is so awful to do to somebody who it's like, people are just out here trying to survive. Like everything's expensive. Like we have so much homelessness. Like it is just a hard it's a hard life for a lot of people. And then on top of that, to be cruel to them is unforgivable. Like, I just feel like that's so wrong. It really made me sad. It like really hurt me for the people who might be doing that out of necessity. Um, and I think about that a lot. Like, I think it's why I really like to donate a lot of what I find is because I don't do this out of necessity. Like I have had steady jobs. We've had like Alex has owned businesses. Like we're not doing this for survival. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I always love the little like icons it puts with those. That's like a pear who's like working out. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, is he mic dropping? That's cute. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's like, um, you know, I really think it's like, I go back and forth on I'm taking stuff out of the trash that potentially somebody else might come here and try to find this. And that's going to be their groceries for that day or that week or whatever. Like, and so it's like the moral dilemma of if I remove it, 
will they suffer for that? Um, and I don't know. I, I still have kind of questions on it that I just don't really know the answer to. Um, but then it's like stuff that's not a necessity, like a lamp or whatever, like um, backpacks. I don't know. Like stuff like that is like less of that moral question for me. But food, um, I don't know. I kind of I kind of wonder. And so I really like to donate it for that reason, because it's it's just we got to all look out for each other, you know. Is that open? Oh, yeah, that's open. Thank you, Gloria, number one fan. Thank you, Gloria. Y'all are awesome. If y'all are still hanging out, I'll keep cleaning these. Y'all are helping me get through way more than I thought I would today. Oh, I think Alex just got home. Yeah, he did. Yeah, staff are governed by the store policy, exactly. We're not. That's, yeah, that's very true. See, diving to give back to your community, like, I really think that that's such an important part of it. And just, like, if we can continue making this community, like, bigger and destigmatizing getting your food out of the trash, that's going to benefit everybody. Because um, there still are TikToks that I post that I'll get responses of, you're disgusting, like, this is so gross, or, like, you're, like, whatever, taking this from homeless people, and, like, all this stuff, and it's, like, it's not true. Hi, I'm live, and I'm cleaning cans. <laughs> Just chatting to myself out here. Yeah. Okay, good. That door's locked. But this way is not. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Alex is home. <laughs> he says hi to everybody. He's real sweaty, so he's going in the shower. <sighs> yeah, Tammy, like, I really do try not to. Um, it's kind of like, it's like that... Thing where you can get like 50 people saying something positive and then that one person like says something negative and it just like emotionally is it like wrecks me like I think that's con like to happen and it doesn't really wreck me like I wouldn't say that like I sometimes can really shrug it off um and be like you don't understand it's an it's coming from an ignorant um viewpoint and and what I want is my purpose or job to change people's minds from from that like okay so you think it's disgusting well let me like try to post more so that more people with your viewpoint are educated about what it actually is um because it's it's really not like these cans actually are kind of they're kind of gross before getting cleaned up and i think that this is what people assume like all the food that's thrown away is like is that it's dirty it should be trash like it's not um salvageable it's not cleanable like all that kind of stuff um or that you're like getting like half a sandwich out of the trash and being like oh like someone was eating this already but i'm gonna eat like it and that's obviously fine too like we've eaten stuff like that like from starbucks they throw out their cake pops and they've got some coffee grounds on them but like we ate them whatever thank you carrie i really appreciate it thank you um but that's not all that dumpster diving is like it's really clean a lot of the times. The dumpsters are a lot cleaner than I think people expect, especially like when it's literally, it's that store's dumpster, they're only throwing food out or whatever. Like you can find some really clean dumpsters uh, that I think a lot of people would be surprised at how good of condition the stuff is that they're throwing away. People assume that if it's, throw, if it's being thrown away, then they just default to that's the right decision. Obviously, it was trash. Um, and that's not always true, um, especially in the case of like expiration dates and stuff, which I know I talk a lot about. I'm just I really am passionate about more people understanding that Best Buy dates, expiration dates, they are not the final 
end all, like, cannot eat this again. Um, there's a, a image that has been shared a couple times in, in the Facebook group. And it's like um, from a food bank and it's their stipulations on if it's expired, that means it's actually good for this. Where did I put that? Oh, it's right there. Canned goods after Best Buy date, good for two to three years. Spaghetti sauce is good for 18 months after the Best Buy. Cereals up to a year. Coffees a year, two years. Like all that stuff um, is like, yeah, we don't need to throw this food away just because it says that it would have been absolutely best yesterday and you're like oh my god I can't eat it if it's not like <laughs> it's best like I don't know also I just think I've never eaten something that's expired and been like yeah this expired like because you can just use your eyes use your your senses like you know if it's got mold on it don't eat it that's a good rule <laughs> but if it smells bad don't eat it um but if it's just that that best buy or expiration date or whatever has passed that's not, I, I, that's just not, you know, um, reason enough to, to waste it, especially, um, when there are food shortages, um, and there are people who are hungry and I just think we could do better, um, with our food. I would really like to know like other countries, cause I know America, um, gets, like we waste the most and we are the one of the most wasteful com countries, if not the most. Um, but I'm curious with other, with other countries, what is the food waste situation like? Um, is it as extreme? That's some stuff I would like to research. And I know you guys are from all over and maybe you um, can inform me because I do think it's kind of like my responsibility, our responsibility as divers to, um, I don't know, educate ourselves in the same way that like, I hope my channel educates people on dumpster diving. It's my responsibility and I can reach a, I don't know, larger, more people who might be curious about it. Um, if I know all my facts and stuff. <laughs> an app in Texas. Oh, what's, oh, what, you wish we had an app. I was about to say, what's the app? Um, 7 million tons a year in Australia of just food wasted. It's, it's really crazy. And that is what's sad when food, food pantries won't take it when it's expired. And I think that's a disservice um, to the people coming there. You could have a, way broader amount of foods i think it's why i'm i'm put it in the free pantry as opposed to taking it to shelters and stuff um is because i'm i don't think they'll accept uh, these canned goods aren't expired that's different um they're just dirty but um a lot most of the food we find does it is expired it's expired maybe a week ago um and i think that we should be able to get that to somebody whose job and responsibility it is, is to get it to the people who need it. Um, it's great to, I would also drive around and pass food out or whatever, but it's like we have these organizations and nonprofits in place to do that. And so it would be really beneficial if they could take um, control and start, you know, being able to see the benefit in foods. Well, this is cat food. <laughs> This is cat food. Thank you, Michelle. Do live auditions. I don't have my glasses on. How do I do it? <laughs> How do I do an audition? <laughs> What's that? Thank you for this uh, super chat. I think that's what they're called. Collabing with an app. Yeah, send me the app. I if I if you said it already, I must have missed it. It's um. Where should I put the cat food? Oh, I have a bunch of cat food. Um, I'm going to put this. I'll be right back. Uh, 
Um, I'm gonna wipe this table off and I'm gonna show y'all the medicine. I did film a little bit um, at this Dollar General, but it's only about five minutes long and it's not really cohesive as a video. It's kind of just bits and pieces all chopped together. Um, but I'm trying to figure out a way to share it. I um, have considered doing the memberships here on YouTube where you pay like Big B, I know you have it. Um, you pay $2 a month or something like that. Um, and the people who are part of that membership get more videos more frequently or um, if I did it, it would be um, like extended cuts of clips. Sometimes we're at dumpsters for 15 minutes, but in the video, I condensed that down to five. So I would show all those or um, show shorter ones, or maybe we only found the one dumpster and that was the only good one. And so I didn't make a full video, but um, stuff like that. I've considered it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. My hands feel disgusting after having those gloves on. Um, They feel so gross. Here's a towel I did not use. Um, whatever you just get to pick, I guess. I think it's really, um, I think it's really cool. Um, but I haven't. I just get nervous that I would. Um, I would. I never want y'all to, uh, like have to pay me for something that. I would be afraid I wouldn't be able to deliver on. So that's what I'd be nervous of is like, could I make sure that I had stuff for those people? Um, anyways, all that. <laughs> I have all this medicine um, to show y'all. And this is just one bag. We have one more of these green bags. This is where we found that food. Um, and then we have a box as well. And this is after uh, Alex's family took a bunch because there was a lot of medicine in here that his grandma specifically uses. And so his mom came and like took bags full of it. So this is even after that. But look at this. Look at all of this. This is, this is just a three pack of magnesium. We are donating these, yes. Um, I'm, I already took in like some of the Tylenols because um, I use Tylenol regularly. Um, but there's, these are ibuprofen, PMs, extra strength, pain relief. Like this is so stupid to throw all of this away. They're not expired. I looked at several of them. This one, 2024 for this, um, <laughs> where'd it go? Triple antibiotic. Um, some of the boxes are dented. We don't care. Like this is an anti-itch cream. There's pain relief sprays, ibuprofen. There was a bunch of Pepto-Bismol, an entire black trash bag full of Peptos. This one's like a huge one. There were all these vitamins. Um, I, I mean, it's crazy. Here's my doll, actually. I'll keep the my doll one. It's, it's, it's expensive. Like, that's the, the wild thing as well is, like, this stuff is not cheap. And this is literally one of three bags that were like this. Um, and we, there, like I said, there were, like, 15 other people there with us. So, we took what we felt was like a smaller amount and other people so that other people could take like more. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to donate this um, in stages because I don't want to fill the pantry up with medicine um, once. And if somebody took it all and then it wasn't able to benefit like more people, I don't know exactly, you know, but um, I do think we'll donate it in stages, but I mean, there's so many things in here that are like the fat. Here's a uh, Dramamine motion sickness. It expires in 2025. Is that how you say that? 2025? I guess I always say 2025. Women's shelters. That's a great idea. Hi. 
Oh, 14 year old Pomeranian to kidney failure last month. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. That's terrible. And that was Pilgrim too. Kidney and kidney failure, liver failure, failure. Um, thank you for the super chat. And I'm really sorry for your loss. I know now I know um, how awful that is. And I really do like sympathize, empathize with people who have lost their pets now, like in a way that I felt sorry for people before, but like now I literally know how painful that is. Um, so I'm, I'm really sorry. But yeah, so a bunch of unexpired um, medicines and it it's, I'll put it back in the bag now, but it really is just like, I was shocked. I really was. Um, it's one, I don't know. It's just, that's a mess to trash all of this. A dumpster full. And I posted, if y'all are on TikTok at all, um, that's the only place I've posted this haul um, is on my TikTok, but I, um, I didn't even post the full haul. I guess I just showed the dumpster and it's full of medicine and, um, stuff, but yeah, if y'all are on TikTok, sometimes I post videos there that are shorter. Thank you, Marion. Marion, whose name is that? Marion. It's from like a old cartoon that I like. I can't remember. I feel like I just watched it here. I don't know. I love that name. It's very pretty. Um, I want to try to think of it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. And look, there were chapsticks. I already took out two of these. I might as well just take this other one. But there were a bunch of chapsticks in here as well. And um, after I had my fever blisters, I couldn't use the chapstick that I had because I get, I'm get. i nervous it's going to... I got it infected and so I threw that one away. Um, and then I got these. <laughs> I, so, um, Diana says that she hopes I can do lives more often. I'm actually wanting to do lives more often. Um, I'm glad that y'all enjoy them. I am just, yeah, I'm interested in doing them more as well. Um, especially if we did do any type of, um, going back out on the road to travel, um, or something like that. I think it would be cool to do some more lives on on the off days or whatever when I'm not posting videos. So I'm glad that you guys like them. I am <gasps> scar gel. Oh my gosh. Um, I my fear blister did scar. I don't know. If, I mean, I know y'all. You can definitely see it. Like I don't know if you can see it right now, but <clears throat> sorry. In my videos. Um, since I got my fear blister, I've had a scar there. Um, every time, every, every time, I don't know. It's not going away. Big B is an awesome mod. Hi, Southern Belle. What's up? Um, yeah, I'm very, um, happy that Big B is here and I feel like it's, he's putting in a lot of, um, work and I really appreciate it. And, uh, yes, very supportive of Big B. Who is hot. Okay. Well, anyways, this is great. I'm glad that I found this um, because I'm going to use it. I almost even uh, went to the store to buy that. I should have looked out here in these bags. Mother on happy uh, happy days. I've never seen happy days. Miri Miriam. It's not Marion. It's Miriam. Where is that from? Miriam. Miriam. It's like um. It's like a cartoon. Miriam. Miriam. I'm trying to look it up. Oh, well, sh that name was in the Prince of... Oh, my gosh! It's, um, Courage the Cowardly Dog. It's the... The lady, the grandma in Courage the Cowardly Dog. Miriam. And Eustace... We were watching that show the other day. I knew I recognized that, but it's not the same name. Vitamin C helps uh, to reduce darker spots. Okay, that's good. It's a scary show. <laughs> Muriel, oh, you said it. Carly said it from Courage, you're right. Muriel. Oh, and Maid Marion is Robin Hood. 
Wow, that's a great name. I And I don't know why they threw all of these away. I think it's ridiculous. They're not expired. This one is the closest. No, no, that's still next year. 10, 10 23. I was going to say that's the closest one, but it's that's still an entire year. Um, iodine. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So there we go. I got free scar cream. And I've taken some of the vitamins out too, because there's a whole nother bag um, that's just full of vitamins as well. Um, which is, it's seriously crazy. Um, they buy, the stores do buy so much. And then they do, a lot of the times it is, it's overstock issues that they throw it away um, for that reason. And uh, it's just like buy less, you know? <laughs> but yeah mm -hmm. also this store was like um temporarily closing and they were actually throwing everything off the shelves throwing it all away um but wow. yeah i don't know why they were closing i looked it up actually because i was like is it a problem like is there something wrong with the store um i looked it up and it said that dollar generals uh, are not meeting the fire health safety codes. And I can understand that when I go into our local Dollar General, there's like, it's in disarray. Like, I don't know if where y'all are, they're nice and organized and clean, but over here, it's insanely um, cluttered. And the article that I read um, that was talking about it said that when the fire inspector came and looked, um, that all the emergency exits were blocked and um, just stuff that's like, you can't do that. And so they shut all these stores down while they get up to code. And so they threw everything away because they were going to be closed for like a couple months. And I guess they didn't want anything to get into the food while um, they were closed. I think it's so, I think that that's wild um, that you would do it that way or especially not donate it, um, send it to a different store. I don't know. I thought it was crazy, but I'm going to try to find a way to share that video, even though it's real short. Um, and it's just like, um, not a lot of talking. It's just like some footage of this crazy dumpster, but, um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. Um, of that, these are the only three things that I'm not donating so far um that's because this one was opened as was this one it's it doesn't make quite the same sound but that is opened and then this is milk that's completely crushed and it looks real crushed and sometimes people talk about canned foods when they get crushed um stuff can get in them or, or something i don't know this one i was just like maybe not but that's it those are the three um and here is let's see if i can show y'all that whole tub right there is cleaned and ready to be donated. So I'm going to, on the next video that we film probably, because I have like two videos that I'm finishing editing, um, but the next one that we go out and do, I will be taking a lot of this food to donate. So we'll go to the Little Free Pantry in one of our um, upcoming videos and do that. Oh, YouTube does shorts. Oh yeah, I've done a couple shorts. When I first started doing YouTube shorts, I didn't realize that you could turn off notifying everybody that you posted a video. And so it like sent out this like 15 second video and told everybody that I'd uploaded a new video. And so I think I just, I don't want to, <laughs> that's kind of disappointing. You're like, oh, it's, this is 10 seconds long. And so I kind of stopped doing shorts. Um, but then I found out that you can actually just click it to turn off notifications to your subscribers. And so I am, I just did that, but I do want to post, um, shorts more and thank you guys. Um, oh, and, and I hope, um, your daughter's surgery goes well. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I really was not in a great mood and <laughs> I was like going back and forth on if I should go live because. I didn't feel that great. And being here with y'all and hanging out and talking and just doing something productive and 
being here and being around other people, it, it really has helped me feel a lot better. And I think now the day is going to be great. And I feel like in a very positive mood, I'm going to go in and start editing or well, finish editing the video for tomorrow. So hopefully you guys like that one. It's crazy. I'm so excited about it. Um, and I, uh, longer video. I know it's hard for me to make longer ones, but tomorrow's is like 30 minutes, I think. So that's pretty good. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for hanging out with me and talking to me. And thank you again, Big B. You're awesome. Um, and yes, I will see you guys tomorrow, not in a live stream, but I am going to try to get that video up. So, okay, there we go. You guys are great. <laughs> I will see y'all later. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful day and happy diving. Bye.